racism, sexism, xenophobia, homophobia, and religious bigotry. It will not be tax breaks for billionaires and efforts to throw millions off the health care that they currently have. principles of our government will be based on justice, on economic justice, on social justice, on racial justice, on environmental justice. Today, I welcome you to a campaign which tells the powerful special interests who control so much of our economic and political life that we will no longer tolerate the greed of corporate America and the billionaire class. Greed which has resulted in this country having more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth.
Today, we say to the American people that we will rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, our roads and our bridges and our rail system, our water systems, our wastewater plants, and our airports. And when we do that, we're going to create up to 13 million decent paying jobs. say to the parents in our country that you and your children deserve quality, affordable child care. And today, here at Brooklyn College, we say to young people all over this country, we want you to get the best education you can, regardless of your income. Good jobs require a good education. And that is why we are going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. And why we are going to substantially lower the outrageous level of student debt in this country. America once had once had the best educated workforce in the world, and we are going to make that happen again. And today, we say to our senior citizens in Vermont, in Brooklyn, in California, we know you cannot survive with dignity on $14,000 a year of Social Security. Republican colleagues in the Senate want to cut Social Security benefits. Well, we've got some bad news for them. We're going to raise Social Security benefits. Today, we say to Donald Trump and the fossil fuel industry, that climate change is not a hoax, but it is an existential threat to our country and the entire planet. And we intend to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel and into energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And when we do that, we're going to create millions of good paying jobs. All of us and every person in this country has a moral responsibility to make certain that the planet we leave our kids and our grandchildren is a planet that is healthy and habitable. And today we say to the prison industrial complex that we are going to achieve real criminal justice reform in this country. We are going to end the international embarrassment of the United States having more people in jail than any other country on Earth. Instead of spending $80 billion a year in jails and incarceration, we are going to invest in jobs and education for our young people. No more private prisons. No more profiteering from locking people up. No more war on drugs that have destroyed so many lives. No more keeping people in 
the strongest grassroots campaign in the history of American politics. Donald Trump wants to divide us up based on the color of our skin, based on where we were born, based on our gender, based on our religion or our sexual orientation. What we are about is doing exactly the opposite. We're going to bring our people together. Black and white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, gay and straight, young and old, men and women, native born and immigrant, we are together. And together we will transform this country. If I might take a moment, as I return here to the area that I was born, let me say a few personal words. As we launch this campaign for president, you deserve to know where I came from, because family history obviously heavily influences the values that we develop as adults. I was born literally a few miles away from here on East 26th Street in Kings Highway. And my family and I lived in a three and a half room rent controlled apartment. My father was a paint salesman who worked hard his entire life but never made much money and my mother raised my brother and me. I learned a great deal about immigration as a child because my father came from Poland at the age of 17 without a nickel in his pocket, without knowing one word of English. He came to the United States to escape the crushing poverty that existed in his community and to escape widespread anti-Semitism. And it was a good thing that he came to this country because virtually his entire family was wiped out by Hitler and Nazi barbarism. I am not going to tell you that I grew up in a home of desperate poverty. That would not be true. But what I will tell you is that coming from a lower middle class family, I will never forget about how money, or really lack of money, was always a point of stress in our family. My mother's dream was that someday our family would move out of that rent controlled apartment to a home of our own. That dream was never fulfilled. She died young while we still lived in that rent controlled apartment. My experience as a child living in a family that struggled economically powerfully influenced my life and my values. I know where I came from. And that is something I will never forget. Unlike Donald Trump, who shut down the government and left 800,000 federal employees without income to pay their bills. I know what it's like to be in a family that lives paycheck to paycheck. Now it is true, I did not have a father who gave me millions of dollars to build luxury skyscrapers casinos and country clubs. 
I did not come from a family that gave me a $200,000 allowance every year beginning at the age of three. As I recall, my allowance was 25 cents a week. But I had something more valuable. I had the role model of a father who had unbelievable courage in journeying across an ocean with no money in his pocket to start a new and better life. I did not come from a family of privilege that prepared me to entertain people on television by telling workers, you're fired. I came from a family who knew all too well the frightening power employers can have over everyday workers. I did not come from a family that could afford to send my brother and me to an elite boarding school. In fact, I was educated proudly in high quality public schools here in Brooklyn. And began my higher education right here on this campus. I should also mention that my brother Larry graduated from Brooklyn College. I did not come from a family that taught me to build a corporate empire through housing discrimination. I protested housing discrimination was arrested for protesting school segregation. And one of the proudest days of my life was attending the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Brothers and sisters, over the last two years and before that, you and I and millions of Americans have stood up and fought for justice in every part of our society. And we've had some successes. Together as billionaires and large corporations have attacked unions, destroyed pensions, deregulated the banks and slashed wages, we have succeeded in raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour in states and cities all across this country. And together, we forced Amazon and the Disney Corporation to do the same. And together, we have stood with teachers all across this country who went out on strike to fight for better schools for their kids. Together as the forces of militarism have kept us engaged in never-ending wars, we have stood together and fought back. For the first time in 45 years, we have utilized the War Powers Act to move us forward to end the horrific Saudi-led war in Yemen. Together, as so many of our young people have received criminal records for nonviolent offenses, we have fought to end the war on drugs and have seen state after state decriminalize the possession of marijuana and are beginning to see states and communities expunge the records of those who were arrested. We have won some victories, but clearly we have a long, long way to go. And I'm here to tell you that because all of the work we have done together, 
We are on the brink of not just winning an election, but transforming our country. And let me tell you a little of what that means. When we are in the White House, we will enact a federal jobs guarantee to ensure that everyone in this country is guaranteed a job. There is more than enough work to be done in this country. Let's get it done. When we are in the White House, we will attack the problem of urban gentrification and build the affordable housing this country desperately needs. When we are in the White House, we will end the decline of rural America. We will reopen rural hospitals that have been closed. And we will make sure that the young people in rural communities have decent jobs so that they can remain in the communities that they love. When we are in the White House, we are going to end the epidemic of gun violence in this country. And we are going to pass the common sense gun safety legislation that the overwhelming majority of Americans want to see. When we are in the White House, we're going to address not only the national disparities of wealth and income, but the racial disparities of wealth and income. We are going together to root out institutional racism wherever it exists. Not only will we end the cowardly outrage of voter suppression, we're going to make it easier for people to vote, not harder. When we are in the White House, we are going to protect a woman's right to control her own body. That decision is a woman's decision. Not the federal government, not the state government, not the local government. Please make no mistake about it. The struggle that we are undertaking is not just about defeating Donald Trump. This struggle is about taking on the incredibly powerful institutions that control the economic and political life of our nation. And I am, and let me be very specific, I'm talking about Wall Street, I'm talking about the insurance companies, the drug companies, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, the fossil fuel industry, and a corrupt campaign finance system that enables billionaires to buy elections. Brothers and sisters, we have to defend their financial interests. 
and they have an unlimited amount of money at their disposal. But we have something that they do not have. We have the people together. So this is what I believe. This is what I believe from the bottom of my heart. If we do not allow Trump and his friends to divide us up, if we stand together, black and white and Latino, Asian American, Native American, if we stand together, urban and rural, north, south, east, and west, if we stand together not as red state and blue state, but as working people, fighting for dignity. If we stand together, believing in justice and human dignity. If we stand together, believing in love and compassion. If we stand together, brothers and sisters, the future of this country is extraordinary and there is nothing we will not be able to accomplish. Thank you all.